There are 2 million dairy cows in the UK, and these animals spend 3 to 4 years of their lives producing milk to meet the demands of the British public. The average milking cow can produce 10 to 15 litres of milk each day, but a high-yielding Holstein can produce up to 20 litres, or 35 pints. Most dairy herds consist of this breed because they are so high-yielding, but it comes as a price. These cows are prone to health issues, in particular lameness. Lameness is quite a big issue in welfare terms for cattle. Um, it's very well publicised these days. Lots of media type people are getting hold of information, looking at these cows, looking at videos of the cows, and they usually end up looking at the cows at the end of the herd. When you see cattle going across the road in towards milking, you always see the lame cows at the end, and people always go, oh, that's terrible, that's really bad. That seems to be the only side of the cows that they see, rather than the healthy ones that have run in at the front. Uh, but lameness can be as a result of nutrition, can be as a result of environmental factors, such as the type of ground that they're walking on, stony ground or very wet ground can be housing conditions, so very wet, underfoot, very mucky underfoot, lots of slurry or infectious pathogens in the ground in the, in the area like that. Worst case scenario, um, cow starts to get lame, she's not being treated for it, she's not being noticed, the herdsmen aren't being able to spend enough time looking at the individual cows. Obviously people are quite pressed these days for time when they're feeding the cows, when they're milking, staffing may be reduced, that sort of thing. They, they, they're not seeing how lame she is, she's getting progressively worse and worse. Worst case scenario, this cow ends up virtually hopping lame. She can put no weight on this leg at all. It'll get to such a stage where no matter what you do in terms of um, foot trimming, corrective foot trimming, prevention is always better than cure. It gets to the stage where the ligaments and the tendons at the back of her foot will actually completely drop. So you'll lose conformational strength in the back legs. Um, the, the lameness also affects things like, um, can affect mastitis, somatic cell count within the body, uh, can also affect fertility quite strongly because if you've got a lame cow that's in pain, particularly on her back legs, she's not going to want to stand to be mounted um, and also these cows very often don't express their oestrous behaviours so you can't tell when they're in heat in order to serve them so that's where your reproduction and your fertility losses come as well. Dairy Co, an organisation that work on behalf of Britain's dairy farmers, recognise this as a problem and recently released figures showing that a quarter of the UK's dairy cattle are lame. In response to this, Cogent, the UK's largest bull stud, organised seminars to help farmers understand what needs to change and why. North is an absolute perfect cow. A one is a cow that you know there's something not quite right there, but you can't really pick it out. A two is a cow that's clearly lame on one, one or more limbs. And a three is a cow that's pretty much crippled um, and the lamenesses and feeding our ability to keep up with the herd. As vets, a lot of our time was spent dealing with lame cows. You'd have a whole morning going out on the farm and pairing out feet and everything. It's very rewarding. It was a very nice thing to do. So you get there, you can do the feet, you see the cows at the end, and you can see you've really done something. So it's a very rewarding job. But was it right that we were ever there and having to do it? And should we now be thinking more about lameness and preventing lameness than we used to? The world's changed quite a lot, we're aware of a lot more things. There are both internal farming reasons and external farming reasons why we have to think about lameness and start looking at it more. On the external side is welfare. It's become a real focus and one of the things you hear when you go to any welfare meetings and things when people start talking about farming is they start talking about lameness in cattle because it's recognised, it's a very easy thing to spot. You walk on a farm, you see lame cows, it's very, very easy to see. So it's an area that everyone's really, really aware of. But do we just need to worry about it because we're thinking about the people who are watching us or do we need to think for ourselves? As farmers, a lot of the subsidies have gone. Your, your life is harder. You have to be more proactive. You have to be more efficient. And you have to make sure the animals are pro providing and producing as they should do. The RSPCA recently conducted an online survey to find out whether the public considered the welfare of cows and buying dairy products. And many campaigns have been introduced to raise the public's awareness. Cows are being milked to death and milking machines are just some of the phrases that are becoming all too familiar. But do farmers actually care about what the public thinks about them? And what are they doing to prove their critics wrong? For the first three or four years things were really good, milk price wise and business wise. Uh, we were expanding because it, it made good economic sense and uh, we, we lifted numbers um, from sort of around th just over 300 to almost 500 cows. The next sort of uh, eight to ten years we sort of a lot of pressure on margins and everything and uh, the only way we could stay profitable was actually get the very best from those cows 
My dad got a well-known saying, if you look after cars, they look after you. And we've been limited to, to what funds we've had available to invest, reinvest. Because of the pressure that's been on the business side of things through milk prices, I think uh, a lot of farmers get, get obviously into the routine, their own thing. They've done it that way for a long, long time. The parents did it that way. And it's a very easy trap to fall into. And we're all guilty of it a bit. So, is it all about the money then? Focusing on milk yields to meet demands can have adverse effects on welfare. But if, unlike Stuart, farmers can't achieve a sustainable price, do they have any other choice? There are other options out there. Supermarkets are becoming more aware of these concerns and are keen to raise their profile in the farming sector. Well, Tesco buy our milk um, through our um, processor, which is Robert Wiseman Dairies. And since they became involved, they basically guaranteed um, a fair price for the milk um, based on cost of production and um, which we contribute to the results of our herds for that and um, the biggest positive is that they guarantee the price for six months in advance so you know what milk price you're going to get. That alone has given us the confidence to, to reinvest and it's given us the motivation to uh, just do things better again, you know, it's just a, sh a shot in the arm because we had got to a point where we were barely making a living, but now we've got the extra funds to invest in improvements. The time to make a change and secure the future of British dairying is now. With impending food shortages worldwide, the industry needs to tackle animal welfare issues and then they can look forward to a positive future.